Just tell us, how did it come about? How, what was there, a phone call or a conversation leading up to it? What happened? It was pretty much out of the blue. Um, Paul McShane did the role last season um, where he, tra- he trains with the lads and I think he ended up playing maybe 15 to 20 games um, and sort of coaches from within the session. Uh, when he decided he was going into the full-time coaching role, he put my name forward, thankfully. Um, and yeah, it just moved on from there, to be honest. Tom, is that what you see yourself doing? Is that you've seen Paul McShane do this kind of player coach with the 21s? Is that what you see yourself transitioning into, a full-time coach? Um, I did my badges quite a few years ago and then sort of didn't really follow up on it because it's difficult whilst you're playing full-time. So I think as a transitional season away from playing full-time, I think this is the perfect role. You're still getting the competitiveness of training, but equally having a look behind the scenes, being involved in the sessions and the planning for the sessions, but equally uh, taking a lot of training sessions yourself. So I think this year will be a big eye-opener for myself to see what goes into it. And come the end of the season, I'll know 100% for sure whether coaching, management is going to be for me long-term. Mm. So how does it work with the under-21? So you can have three players that are over the age of 21, is that right? <laughs> Yeah, thankfully. Quite a lot over the age as well. <laughs> so do, um, do you see yourself playing quite a lot? On you know, What are your expectations for the season? Will you just concentrate on the coaching side of things? Um, well, from a day-to-day basis, it will mix. Sometimes I'll maybe be training three or four times a week with the lads and having a different perspective to the coaches on the sideline. Um, working, obviously, close closer with the midfielders, I would say. And then if and when, if there's injuries or lads get promoted in and around the first team, um, then I'll, I'll play the games if needed. But uh, the main priority is the coaching side and setting the example in training and around the building, really. Tom, is there any scenario where you could end up in the first team? And I'm talking about in case there's injuries. Could you, you've seen it before where teams are decimated with injuries, can't get anyone in. I mean, is, is that even possible? Could that be an option or is that... Is that not the type of contract this is? No, I don't think this is the type of role. This is, I'm um, obviously with the, what's classed as the academy, the development stage and helping the lads, whether it be technical mindset um, and stuff like that. There'd need to be the biggest, the biggest injury crisis for me <laughs> to think it. But no, I'm not obviously not thinking about that. It's a case of helping develop the, the lads that are looking to make that ne- next step to be in and around the first team. And then the, the age group below that that are just coming into the building and making it their full time job. Um, a few tricks of the trades that I've I've picked up over the past sort of fifteen twenty seasons. Mm. So, what's your relationship going to be like with Ten Hag? Have you met up? Have you had a chat? Uh, will it be a day to day catch up? A weekly? How does it work? Um, well, with the under 18s and under twenty ones, there's four of the guys in position already. Obviously, one of them heads that up. I'm probably, I guess, the, the fifth coach in line between between the two age groups. So the first team will be nothing to do with myself. Um, I'm sure the, the person that's heading up the academy ill liaise with the manager daily, I would say. But from a personal point of view, mine's just sticking with the, with the academy players and helping trying to develop them in whatever way possible. And have you met Ten Hag? Have you had a chat with him at all yet? No, not yet. I've only, I've only been in for one day so far. Oh, OK. Um, so yeah, just finding my bearings around the building at the minute and sort of being babysitted by Paul McShane and a couple of the other staff. Um, but yeah, finding my bearings and it's a role I'm looking forward to and excited to get my teeth stuck into. When you're looking at some of the players that you're going to be working with, Tom, do you see much difference, certainly when we were coming through as kids, to the kids that are there now? I know obviously under 21s, you was in the, I think you got into the first team, what, 15 was it? Yeah, Back end of school days. <laughs> so, do you see much difference in the, the young kids coming through now as when you were coming through? I think there's a lot more at their disposal um, in terms of every session's reco- every training session's recorded. You can go back and watch certain parts of your session. Um, yeah, and the f- facilities, obviously, especially when I was coming through at Derby, it was we'll be getting minibuses to three or four different venues and train on any pitch that we could find. So I think the facilities the lads have got, the feedback and the amount of coaches in different different areas, whether that's nutrition, 
analysing your game, uh, stuff away from the pitch as well. I think it's it's there for everybody to succeed, but we know that the game the game has moved on since we were coming through, and it's it's a big business now. So for you to succeed now, you you need to be that not even the one percent, probably half a percent now for especially at a club like Man United, it's going to be really difficult mm. for players to break in. But um, our objective is to get them as close to that as possible. So where are you at now? I know you were playing at, at Hull last season. Have you retired? Are you thinking about retirement? Where are you at with your career? Um, I'm guessing this is a semi-retirement. Obviously, as I say, I'm still eligible to play um, the 21 games every so often. Um, but yeah, I guess from a first-team point of view, it is kind of retirement unless when I'm 36 next summer, if, if, the, if they don't want me coaching anymore and I have to get back into playing. But no, nah, I see this role as a season or two as a transition in away from playing out of the game. So yeah, I guess it is a retirement. So, so, oh, so it is a retirement, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I guess obviously the, the under-21 games are still competitive and in a league. So I guess I could still play half a dozen a dozen games for them but equally from a first team environment I guess it it's close to retirement yeah all right okay and and how, did this land on your lap then or I don't mean this particular job but this role or was it something you've been thinking about for a long time I hadn't thought about it until it was put to me a few weeks ago um back end of the season obviously my main objective was to continue playing um a few I had a few offers, but looking at the bigger picture uh, from a personal point of view, did I want a token season playing, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 games in League One or League Two? Or did I want to get my coaching career started? And obviously, once a club like Man United come knocking, it's difficult to turn down in whatever role. Tom, do you know do you know if this is a common role? And do you know do you know if other clubs do this type of thing as well? Because I've, I, I said I've, the only one I've ever heard do it was Paul McShane. But do you know if this is quite common amongst I think Liverpool are doing it, aren't they? Amongst other clubs. Yeah, I know. As Andy says, I think Jay Spearing's doing it mm. with Liverpool under 18s um, But yeah, I spoke to Paul McShane when he got the job last year, and he explained the role to me. And I don't remember if he was at Sunderland with you, but he's a perfect candidate for that type of role. And Obviously, 12 months later, he must have thought similar of myself. So, thankfully, he put my name forward. Okay. Uh, we're going to put you on the spot now and ask you some horrible questions, all right? You have to answer them, Tom, all right? Um, I'll try my best. How's Ronaldo? I've not met him yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's not training with the 21, no? No, nah, he's still with the first team. Okay. How do you think United are going to do this season? We, we Bent and I went through our top four. I've got United in it. He hasn't. How do you think United will do? From as I say, I've only been there a day, but from the feedback and speaking to some of the younger players that have been with the first team throughout pre season, the manager is going to be very demanding on and off the pitch. Um, and they're saying it's maybe what the club's lacked in the past couple of seasons. Um, so everyone's confident that it's going to be a successful year. Um, obviously, everybody, every club in the country moans about signings and stuff like that, but. I think if you look at the, the starting eleven that he's got to work with, it, it's going to be there challenging. Obviously, Liverpool and City have been phenomenal for the past six or seven years, but I think that Man United are on an upward trend for sure. Well, And another one of your former clubs, Tom, uh, Spurs, great signers in the window, had a good season last season, Antonio Conte, serial winner. What do you expect from them? I think, again, uh, they've got to start re-cementing themselves in the top four. I think the best thing that Tottenham did this summer was get their signings in early doors. Um, we know Conti's quite regimented in his training style, so for them to get as much of the pre-season un- under their belt with him as possible will we'll only put them in good stead. Tom, listen, thanks so much for coming on. Um, just, just quickly going back to something you said earlier on about where you're at now, and you, you sort of said you, it, that is it for you. You're going to retire from senior football. Is that the first time you've actually said that out loud? Or have you spoken to maybe your wife or friends or mum and dad about that? Yeah, no, I've spoken to friends and sort of saying, if you consider the options that I was getting, which wasn't really taking my fancy, I guess in a year or two times, them options are going to be lesser again. So, yeah, I have spoken to people about transitioning into the, the next stage of my career and 
thankfully it still is within football. Otherwise, I'd have had to come and take Bentley's job. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing, but behind that laughter, there's a worry. Tom, don't say that. <laughs> what's, what's it like being at a proper club for once, Tom? <laughs> no, it's been good. I've been up there a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, you, the magnitude of the club, obviously, people say it, but from the outside, you don't realise. Um, even putting a couple of tweets or posts out last night, you don't realise the size of the club until the replies and likes and followers are starting to come flooding in. Yeah, well, listen, thank you so much for coming. If nice you do, one, Tom. If United do have problems in midfield and you do get that call up, what shirt number do you want? Anything will do. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.